tonight. <laughs> Let me go ahead and get this disclaimer in real quick. <laughs> you wonder why the hell so many people are trying to tell me to slow down. Seems like motherfuckers should be shutting the hell up and enjoying you the show. Them, you better shut down and enjoy the show. We got a special edition, okay? I see y'all over here in the comments. Y'all in here deep tonight. What's going on, y'all? Is y'all ready? Thank you so much for your patience. Um, I know that we teased y'all early, um, you know, when we were doing this documentary, but that's how we build momentum, you know? And so I know you guys were waiting on it to drop, but after you see all three parts that will be airing tonight, Tomorrow night, as well as Sunday night, you'll see why it took so much time, okay? It took everything out of our entire team, all right? Now, um, before I take some questions really quick, let me go ahead and pay the bills because I'm not going to interrupt the live to pay the bills, all right? So we're going to go ahead and shout out the sponsors. We got some sponsors that we need to brag about, which means what? Bully raise our glass to. Let's get I enjoy oral sex. But to be honest, some of my experiences have been not pleasing due to lack of proper vaginal hygiene. I went down on this chick once and the yoni was so good and fresh. It took me on like a whole nother level of just pleasure. So at that moment, I had to stop and ask, what are you using? And she told me, embrace Pangea Feminine Wash. We all know that a fresh yoni brings on a whole new level of confidence, so visit EmbracePangea.com, and of course, I got my winos covered for a discount, so use the coupon code Tasha K for 10% off your first order. AdamandEve.com, I'm talking toys, bondage, lingerie, and so much more. Plus, they have 24-7 customer service, so you can order at 3 a.m. if you ain't coming, if you get me, okay? And if something isn't working out, you can send it back within 90 days, no hassle, and if that's not enough, you can also take pleasure in knowing that 20% of their profits goes to help fight the spread of HIV around the world. So go on ahead and log on to adamandeve.com. Use the code Tasha K for 50% off one item plus free shipping in the U.S. and Canada. Some exclusions apply now, but hurry up and visit adamandeve.com so they can make you come. Let's put the wine down for a second because at times like this, we need to take a shot of the olive leaf extract because the olive leaf boosts our immune system and has been known to reverse high blood pressure, lupus, diabetes, and certain cancers. Check them out at myoliveleaf.biz to learn more and to order or simply click the link below in the description box. Now back to the wine. All right, we're back. We're back. May I have your attention, please? Okay, now... Um, I said 8 p.m., so I'm going to start the show exactly at 8 p.m. I don't want no winos getting PO'd at me, okay? Now, please do not forget to support our sponsors, okay? Your Pangea Wash, you have your stuff, it's all organic, it's vegan, got rose extract, some vanilla, some everything in there, okay? So when your, your partner eats it, it's a pleasant and delicious experience, okay? Make sure you get your olive leaf, it's antiviral, that's all I need to say. I ain't had nothing, Okay? I've been taking it three years religiously. Nothing. Um, and also, you know, your pleasure toys. Don't forget, okay? And your partner ain't eating it good, okay? Get you some pleasure toys. Now, we're going to slow down the comments. I saw you guys complaining. Jasmine is running just a little bit behind, okay? Um, I see you guys going really, really fast. You said, no, I got to slow down the chat. Okay, did you slow it down 60 seconds? Okay, we slowed it down to 60 seconds. There's a lot of people, and it goes really, really fast, okay? Um, let me see. Any questions before we get started in three minutes? There she go. There go Jazzy Faye Productions on my nizzle in the building. We tried to wait for you, Jazzy. <laughs> we tried. We tried. Okay, um, and we started it a little early just so it would give YouTube some time to send out the notifications. YouTube did reach out to us to let us know that it takes 30 minutes for all of the notica notifications to go out if you have your bell on, okay? If you have your bell on, I love you too, Sweetness 13. Moderators, please, okay? Now, why knows? I have literally cleaned up 
The moderators, we only have the OG moderators, okay? The day ones, they know that I don't play that blocking shit, okay? I need my audience, I need my coin, all right? And when you black people, I don't get paid. You understand? Everybody got freedom of speech over here. Now, let me see. I see it's a lot of y'all in the building tonight, okay? Now, the reason we ended up cutting it up and to three parts is because we did get some feedback in Patreon, and a lot of people said that part two was really long. Although it did bring you into it, you left kind of exhausted because it is a lot of information to take in, okay? And so we split it up into three parts. They're each one hour long, okay? That means you get time to digest. That way, when it goes into part two, you can take it all in because it is a lot taking in other people's energy. I get that, okay? So I appreciate y'all being patient patient with me. We're not going to have any technical difficulties, okay? We are not speaking that into existence. And with that being said, it is 7.59. What we got? About 30 seconds? 30 seconds? Y'all want to count down? <laughs> am I going for something big? We're always going for something big, okay? What, you, what am I doing this for? I'm not doing this for, you know. Anyway, um, can I, uh, hold on for a second. You understand? Okay, 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 okay. All right, so um, I will see you guys after the show. North Philly is PTSD on steroids injected into your neck. First time I saw a man killed in front of me, my uncle did it. He blew a hole through somebody. All I know is we was playing jacks on the step. I heard a man running, screaming, no, no. And he jumped over our head. He took off running. He didn't make it but 50 paces. And then I seen the hole go through. And then I, heard, I felt the smoke and, and, and the gunpowder fall on my head. I was three years old. First time I seen a man's guts all over the concrete where we played jacks and hopscotch. Until a few months ago, Jaguar Wright was fairly an obscure name. Despite releasing two albums and working alongside artists such as Al Green, The Roots, and Black Alicious, the New Jersey born singer had never really made it mainstream. That has recently changed, but before we dive into the present, let's take a look at her past. Jaguar Wright was born Jacqueline Suzette Wright in New Jersey. She began her music career as a neo-soul and R&B artist and in 1998 was introduced to the rules. While this didn't lead to her superstar stardom, it did lead her to become a backup singer for Jay-Z as well as appearing in a Coca-Cola commercial as a part of their new soul ad campaign. She released her debut album in 2002, which did not gain any success. Afterwards, she served as a backup singer on and off the road during her 18-year career and collaborating with various artists. But you likely haven't heard the name Jaguar Wright because of her music career. Her real claim to fame has been her recent online feuds, accusations, and rants against fellow artists. This woman was so aggressive with me that if I describe how she treated me in 2020, they'd be like, oh, she sexually harassed you. 2020 has been a rough one for everyone, but it seems to have taken a toll on Wright. Her Instagram bio reads, I am, that's all. Many questions will be answered this year. My goal is to become the queen of transparency. Stay tuned, writes Jaguar Wright. You know, I, I, I'm gonna say it right now, cause I think part of the reason why I had that nervous breakdown is because I've been carrying 20 years of lies for someone else's benefit and not for my own. Wright started off going off on a barrage of musicians this summer, the tirade apparently triggered by the death of Malik B from The Roots. Since then, she has made a series of videos where she goes after Erica Badu, Mary J. Blige, Jill Scott, Tiffany Haddish, who she eventually apologized to, and comment to name a few. Allegations range from sexual abuse to betrayal to family drama, and it appears as if no one is safe from Wright's wrath. All of her outbursts have raised some questions, with many of her fans questioning her mental health and stability. If you want to talk on somebody's goddamn mental health, then you better speak correct. Do not, do not play me like that. 
While many believe that there may be some truth to what she is saying, they also think that the way she is going about delivering her message is an indication of a mental health crisis. However, this is not the first time Jaguar Wright has made the news for controversy. In 2016, she was arrested and charged with child abduction of her youngest child, and she has a history of unstable relationships. Additionally, there may be some merit to her fans' concerns about her mental health, as her son Giovanni was murdered in a hotel park parking lot in 2018, and losing a child takes a serious mental and emotional toll on anyone. Whether Jaguar's rants are healing troop sessions or just typical entertainment drama, one thing is for certain, she's gotten lots of attention on social media, and with that being said, I've taken the time to interview some of her relatives to have a better understanding of her dilemma. Grab your wine. Did you meet her when she was Jaguar right, or did you meet her when she was Jacqueline? Right. Um, my ex, Jackie, um, how do we meet? She came into uh, a location where I worked at the time looking for something for her ex-boyfriend. Okay. Um, she purchased what she needed for her ex-boyfriend and left. Um, what she, year was this, if you don't mind me asking? 99. Oh, wow. 1999, I want to say. Okay. And, um... She later came back that afternoon with the item that she was able to get for her ex-boyfriend. And um, she said it didn't work out. I said, okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. So what happened? She caught him in another situation with a woman mm. at her place. Mm. Um, as such, they got into an argument. They broke up. And she asked if I could meet her afterwards on okay. a date. All right, sure. You can go out. So she gave me the location to the studio, 421 North 7th Street in Philadelphia. Okay. And I met her there after I work, you know, after work. And um, she hadn't put out any music or anything like that. Um, she she said she just finished a studio recording, and she wanted to go get drinks and shoot a little pool. And I said, okay, fine, no problem. At the time, I never played pool before, um, except maybe once when I was 10 years old over my uncle's house in Virginia. And um, we shot pool, she beat the death out of me. And, um, and that's how we started. I don't like losing in anything that I do. So um, I learned, I taught myself alongside a few other people too, but I taught myself how to play. Every day on my lunch break, I would practice so that I can get better, so that I can win. So that's what I did. Um, and um, joined the team. Um, eventually, there's a league that's called the APA, and um, they have handicaps, which is a ranking from two being terrible to seven being somewhat of a pro or an amateur pro. And every man starts off at a four. Oh. So, so I got beat bad and I dropped to a two. And um, through training, through my team and camaraderie and practice every day on my lunch break, um, I got better. And I got to the point where she could never beat me. And um, my highest ranking is the seven. Um, built my own teams between Philadelphia, Chicago, New York, and um, other places, but won the national championship in Chicago for two of the teams that I built and um, with a different league called TAP and uh, finished 33rd in the country in the Masters. So all that, that from... All that from, from her beating your ass her beating my in ass pool. In on pool. your first was, can we say that that was like your first date? That was our first date. Yeah. Okay. How'd you feel about her? Like, like, what was your first impression of her? Like when you saw her, and then she asked you out. Were you like feeling her? Well, she was a beautiful woman okay. um, in my eyes. Um, didn't know anything about the singing part, but she seemed like she had a good spirit. Okay. And um, I didn't have a problem with her at all. 
Um, I thought she was, you know, pretty cool to be around. She was funny. And, um, you know, I thought it was a good first date. And then we had, you know, multiple dates thereafter. I had a place on uh, Broad Street, like South, some like Broad in, uh, somewhere in South Philly. Okay. And <clears throat> she had a place somewhere else, actually still on 4th Street where she lived. Um, my lease was expiring. Her lease was about to expire. And uh, she said, we should get a place together. And I said, uh, okay, a little fast. <laughs> Like how long had you guys seen like each other? known each other? Like it was about three months in. Okay. Excuse me. No, you're good. You're good. It's about three months in, and uh, she said we should do it. I said all right. So I will say she was the first woman that went out of her way to build a home for the two of us, or for me. So when I say that, I mean like she got a terrible apartment. And when I say terrible, I mean terrible. She physically went out and bought tile from Home Depot, bought carpet with the little bit of money she was making at the time, um, and laid tile, laid carpet, just so we can have this little apartment together. And, um, I thought that was something that there was a good feature to be able to have that kind of experience from a, from from someone you know from a woman that I you know was dealing with. I've had a girlfriend beforehand um, who was great, loved her, um, but never had I had an experience where someone wanted to create a home for the two of us at that point in time in my life. We were both young. So, How um, old were you? I was 20, it was 1999, so I was 23 oh. at the time, and that would have made her 22. So, um, yeah, so we did that for a while, but then she said, oh, you know what? We should get married. I'm like, well, it's still kind of soon. <laughs> we just moved in together. She said, yeah, but we're living in sin. You know, you know, my father's a minister, you know, your father's a minister, your mom's a minister, you know, we shouldn't be living in sin. I said, all right, Jackie, I said, if you, you want to get married, we'll get married, but I want to have a regular wedding. I don't want to have something willy nilly. Yeah, but you know, that's going to take too long. We should get married in a loop. Like Jackie, I, I, I don't want to go through that a loop. Um, after two weeks of browbeating me about getting married and eloping, I said, fine, I'll do it only if my father will agree to be there. If my father will agree to be there, I'll, I'll do it. Um, my father said he definitely wanted to be there. My mom did not like her at all. Um, so my father was there. Her girlfriend, Leslie was there. We eloped to city hall and the rest is history as far as the marriage was concerned. Did your mom come? My mom did not come because my mom would have made a scene. Why didn't so, she like Jackie at the time? Jackie. You know, my mom saw something in Jackie that I didn't see. And, excuse me, and, um, you know, my mom was like, no, you, this is not the person you need to be with. You know, you know she had someone else from when I was much younger that she thought that I should be with. But um, based off of what I had seen at the time from Jackie, um, I, yeah, I keep calling her Jackie or Jaguar. No, it's okay. Know, so, yeah. I, uh, I mean, we, we made the stance yeah. in the beginning. Everyone knows, yeah. you know, Jackie Jaguar. So Based off of what I, what I saw in the beginning, I thought, you know, I can make this work. And um, so, you know, we didn't bring my mom. Um, my father did disclose to my mom and she was highly upset that we got married. And, um, but she learned to live with it until things started going bad. Mm. And um, some of the things that occurred, um, I even didn't see and her family didn't disclose to me that she, you know, she 
she was a little off. Um, she had some issues and was diagnosed with a little something when she was younger. Do you know what that is? What that was? I don't know exactly the... I don't know exactly what it what it was called. You know, if you talk to her family, they'll tell you what it is. If you talk to her sister, her cousins, okay, they will tell you what it was. Okay, I didn't realize that until afterwards. Then the signs came. You know, there were maybe some signs before, but you know, someone once told me, um, "Red flags look like six flags when you're having fun." Mm. Okay, so. Um, so I was having fun, you know, at a young age. Um, my, what I did, I was highly successful at. Um, I was number one globally for, in terms of what I did. She, um, she was up and coming as far as what she was doing. It was a good team, so to speak, at the time. Um, Things started to go bad a little bit later. You know, like so. how far into so you guys are married, three months in, living together, you have a home, you're in love. You're married in nine months. In nine months, okay. You're in love. Okay. Yeah, so you're and, trying to get a timeline down. So yeah, I'm trying months. to get a timeline down. It's okay. Um, and so nine months in, how long until it gets bad? Like after after the marriage, after you got married. almost immediately, almost immediately, it's like a a, a a trigger went off that um it's like all right he's locked down now so let's switch the behavior a little bit. What was the first time? Um, the first time like you know just to flat out cursing at me, you know if you have a persona for stage and that's you're a Jaguar, right? You're going to curse. You're going to do various things. Um, and that's the, you know, that's what you're trying to present to your niche of people. That's one thing. You know, how you articulate a conversation with me as your mate, as someone you should be able to respect, as someone you should care about and love, something different. And the the story, you know, the the whole persona changed after um, after you know we made the decision to get married. Um, it went almost downhill immediately. How did it make you feel when you saw like the switch? Like what was going on in your head? Like my mom was right, or yeah. Yeah. yeah, that, um, definitely that. Um, but you know, when you're when you marry, you marry someone for um, for better or for worse, and you try and find ways to work through whatever issues you have. Okay. So for me, if I did something wrong, you know, I want to understand the why behind it, because you can't move forward until you understand the why. You can't be able to grow together as a team until you understand the why. Um, so for me, um, I needed to try and undercover, uh, uncover, you know, why? What ha what, what's the reason for this? Mm -hmm. um, things what did she say to you? Like, do you remember? Because I know when, when things like that traumatic happen, you know, they never go away. Like, mm -hmm. what were some of the things that she said to you almost immediately? Like, after you got married, you had this, you know... Beautiful wedding. You know, it, it was, you know, it, we eloped. Okay. It wasn't a beautiful wedding for me. Well, I mean, it was, your it, dad you know, was there. We, we, we eloped. <laughs> okay. okay. So okay. my dad was there. That's special for me because my father yeah. um, molded me to be the man that I am. My father um, taught me the meaning of work, had me working at 10 years old, unfortunately. <laughs> but... Um, my well, father. you're doing well right now, yeah. I can tell. <laughs> it, 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 if it wasn't for my father, I wouldn't be who I am. So for me, it was highly important for my father to give me his blessing and even go forward and do it. All right. So um, because he did that, you know, I went through with the the experience of marriage with my ex-wife. Um, 
I'm gonna take these off. It's okay. Um, so things did go south shortly thereafter, and you said some of the things that she would say. Yeah. She would say, um, you, you know, F and B and this and that, and um, and I'm like, where is this coming from? And then I'll, you know, I'm not your peer. I'm not your your audience, right? I'm someone that made a decision to have to spend a life with you. So if we can't work through this, and uh, I would, after a while, I would just go out and leave, go shoot pool because pool became my passion. And um, I use that to be able to try kind of channel away the negativity that was happening at home. So I would shoot pool for hours mm -hmm. and um, then come back, then try and work through it. Um, it got bad when it really started to go downhill after she left to go on the road, which was almost directly after we got married. Was she with the Roots at this time? She was. Okay. So the Roots had signed her to, um, I believe it was like a pre-production deal until she can get her own deal through MCA. Um, so she went out on the OK Player Tour, had an opportunity to visit multiple cities and gain exposure through their fan base, through their network, you know, and um, be able to grow as an artist. So, um, how'd and, you feel about her going on the road? I was fine with that. You were okay with that? So yeah. you fully supported her? And... I fully supported her career. I fully supported her. Um, fully. Now, I was invested because I was invested in my wife. Okay. Okay. So, you know, whatever you need to do to be able to do what it takes to be able to grow your craft, to grow as an artist and as a person, do it. You know, um, I'm fully supportive. You got to go out on the road, go on the road. Okay. You know? So, I mean, most husbands would see, you know, it's a lot of men and you're my wife. And not that you, you know, you're insecure, but you know how men are, mm. you know, um, that didn't like at least cross your mind. Mm. I'm not worried about a man if I'm secure in my okay. own skin. Okay. I'm not worried about what people say about me. I think um, I think if people have been paying attention over these last six months, I can care less what my ex-wife has to say about me. Yeah. I do care about how what she says impacts the people around me. Right. I do care that it impacts my son. I do care that it impacts her mother. I do care that it impacts my family. Okay. But personally, you can say whatever you want to say. If people want to believe you, they believe you. Yeah. Now, I, they, I, I, they don't pay my bills. They don't. Yeah. They don't take care of. Right about that. They don't take care of ensuring the development of my son. They don't take care of ensuring that he gets to the next stage in life and he can be a man that stands on his own two feet and take care of a family of his own when it's time. So, social media, I, I block that out, kind of. Okay. You know, I may. There are times I do have an Instagram account. And I do have a Facebook account. Yeah, they're private, so yeah. you can't really access anything. So that's why so, I said you almost have no presence yeah. online. So, I mean, what I'll do, you know, I mean, if you're a friend of mine, you know, Instagram, I post pictures when there's a special moment in my life. So if my son just graduated from high school, that's on my Instagram page. If I take her mother out for Thanksgiving dinner, which I did. So you're still very close with... Jaguar's family. You're just not close with Jaguar. I, I don't need to be okay. close with her. Um, the only thing that ties us together is our child, our son. Excuse mm -hmm. me. I can't even call him our child anymore. Our son. Yes. Um, who's a man at 18 years old. Okay. So at, at this stage, it's really about what does her relationship look like with our son? Um, those are the questions she, be, she should be asking and not how... I can be deterring that. Yeah. Um, I have said to her, 
And I've said to him that, son, you get one mother. No matter how I feel about your mother, that's your mother. And the reality is you should have a relationship with your mother. And if you feel as though you feel uncomfortable about how your mother will talk about me, then you can terminate the conversation and state that the conversation should be pointed directly with me and what's going on in my life. Um, I don't care for you to talk about dad. And if that makes you feel uncomfortable, then that's what you say. Um, But you should still have some kind of relationship with your mother. I'm not here to deter you, stop you. Um, That's that. I don't have anything negative to say about Jackie. Um, She did make a video when she kind of got wind. I don't know where she got it from that. I was going to be talking to you Mm -hmm. um, because I didn't say anything online at all. So um, she said that um, my 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 ex-husband will never talk to you because he will be facing all sorts of charges and incriminating himself. So many that he can't, you know, I can't name. And so he will go to jail if he talks to you. Sam Odom's thirsty ass just opened you up for everything. I'm coming for my money, Chicago. I can't get my time back, but you're going to pay me for my time. And um, maybe y'all will finally start pressing charges against Samuel Odom. Because if he has this much time to take court documents, court documents from Chicago and Philadelphia, which threw all of his cases out. Philadelphia threw all of his cases out, by the way. He lost in Philly and he lost in Jersey big, which is why he doubled down in Chicago. So please. Get him to perjure himself. Get him to lie because I have every court document from the past 10 years, including his assault on me and my dead son from New Jersey. He's not going to talk to you, Tasha. I wish he would. But don't you look thirsty, though. Again, I don't fear Jackie. I don't fear the words she says. I fear the words that she says. Um, I don't fear the voicemails that she leaves. I don't fear the death threats. I don't fear none of that. At this stage in my life, as I've told her, I told her on camera, I'll tell her in front of her face, there's nothing you can do that can impact my life. Um, The comments that she says, people can investigate it, talk about it. You know, once they're finished their investigations, they usually find her allegations unfounded. Um, All the time. All the time. (laughs) Yes, all the time. So the reality is, you know, if she has a certain set of people that choose to believe her allegations, that's their choice. We're all grown adults, right? right? I'm not here to change anybody's mind. I can care less what you think. You know, I care about my ability to impact my son and ensure that my son is in the proper footing to be able to survive when he's ready to go out on his own and take care of himself and a family. That's all I care about at this stage in my life. Okay. Okay. I'm glad you made that clear. All right. So you're married. Um, you fully support, you know, Jackie, your, your career is Mm -hmm. taken off of course. Mm -hmm. And you know, you have pool, um, she's on tour building her career. Talib. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I hope I'm saying his name right. Talib Kweli. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, there, I guess, is an affair. Mm Mm-hmm. How long into her going on tour and you all being married before that happens? Almost immediately. So she goes on the road. We get married April 7th of 2000. The roots go on the road, I want to say, in August or September for the OK Player Tour. You can look up the dates, I'm sure, yeah. as Google. Okay. I don't know the dates. So okay. whatever the timeline is between April 7th and the time the roots go on the road, the very first night you go on the road, um, I'm calling to check you to see how your show was. I can't get you. So think nothing of it. You know, Go to sleep. Wake up the next morning with a phone call from someone on you know from the roots camp looking for her because they're ready to leave everyone's on the tour bus she's not on the tour bus and they don't want to leave her have i spoken to her was to live on the tour bus yes okay 
Um, everyone was on the tour bus but her. They can't find her. So she's not in her room. They don't know where she is. And I said, well, listen, you guys are, I think, in Boston. I have no idea where she is. She's not here with me in Philly. So I don't know what to say. I'm sure she'll turn up at some point. Later, I find out um, that from her, from Jackie, that she, not from anyone else, that she fell asleep. Um, she said in Talib's room, they were smoking weed and they fell asleep. Mm. And I said, okay, well, that's what you did, that's what you did. You know, when you tell me something, your word is bond, unless I find one reason for it to be otherwise. Okay. Okay? So if I say I'm going to do something, I do it. I told you I was going to come here. Yeah. I, I mean what I say. Yeah. When I say something, that's just it. So when you tell me something, I expect the same respect. Right. And in this particular case, she told me that's what she was doing. And that's what she was doing. Later, um, I find out from her that um, she tells me that she slept with Talib. But I'm like, what do you mean you slept with Talib? What? She's on tour telling you this over She's the phone? She's on tour telling me this on the phone, saying I slept with Talib. And I said, so why are you telling me this? What did you hope to accomplish by telling me you slept with Talib? And she said, well, I didn't want to be out here living a lie. And I just wanted to let you know this is what I did. I said, okay. So we just got married. And you're telling me you got on a, you, 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 you're out on the road and you slept with Talib. I said, this happened the very first night? No, it didn't happen the very first night. I said, well, when did it happen? She told me much later down the line. So, um, you know, I'm vexed at that point. You know, we hang up the phone. I'm at work and um, I tell my boss, I said, listen, you know, I need some time to deal with some things. Uh, can I take a vacation? And he says, well, Sam, we really need you because, you know, you're, you know, basically I'm producing. Mm -hmm. And I said, listen, um, it's either I quit or I take some time. So you give me a choice. And he said, we'll take the time you need. So I took a week's vacation. Okay. <clears throat> and um, didn't tell Jackie. I just went and I paid for out of my pocket a flight to go to a one-way flight to Chicago. Is this where she was at the time? There, so they were on their way to. Oh. The House of Blues. And... Um, so I fly there, I land, you know, I take a cab in to um, House of Blues. I walk up, I tell the guy that I'm uh, Jack Wright's husband, I'm here for the show. They didn't ask me any questions. They said, oh yeah, no problem. Come on, my name wasn't on the list. I just popped up. Um, I wanted to have a conversation with Talib and I wanted to, um, Checking with Jackie as well. Had you guys had ever had any conversations like you and Talib before? No. Okay. So I get there and um, I see Tariq. I, you know, gave him a pound. So what's up? Didn't see Talib at first. Um, I do see him. And um, I asked him, could I have a conversation with him? And he said, sure, no problem. So... Um, I said, I don't want to be around a whole bunch of other people. I'm sure my my presence here is alarming as is, since I didn't notify anybody. Mm -hmm. I said, but you have a second? He said, sure. So we went to the back stairwell area, and I just told him, I said, listen, I'm not here for drama. I'm not here for any beef. I'm here to work on my marriage. And um, I just need to know because... I just didn't even know when did it first happen. And he told me it happened the first night. So she had lied about it. Correct. So I was upset at that point. I said, but I appreciate your honesty. Thank you very much. I didn't say I was upset at him. I said, I appreciate your honesty. I thank you for it. And he, he rolled out. Um, I then asked Jackie to pull, aside, pull her aside. 
You know, I asked her, I said, so when did it first happen? Oh, it happened when I told you. I said, you, you effing lied. I mean, I can look at you. You can look me in my eyes. You can't look me in my eyes and tell me it happened then. It happened the first night. No, it didn't. Okay. Look me in my eyes and tell me it didn't happen when you said, just tell me. And she didn't know that you had already spoke with Mm-mm. Talib at no. the time. No, okay. she didn't know. So, um, well, she probably knew because she couldn't find Talib and everybody at that point was running around, you know, saying Sam's here, Sam's here, Sam's here. And everyone knew what was going on on the road between the two of them because she was messy, obviously. You know, if you're going to do dirt, do you need everyone to be in your business about your dirt? Yeah. So you're messy with it. Like she's young. She's 22 years old. You know, 22 year olds make mistakes. But in this case, it wasn't a mistake for her. It was intentional. Um, it was intentional for her to cause drama. It was intentional, maybe not intentional for it to happen on the road, mm-hmm. but it was intentional to cause drama. In the year 2000, the OK Player Tour, uh, she propositioned me. That would be the correct word for sex. Um, you know, and we had a little relationship, even though that she was a uh, she had a husband. This woman was so aggressive with me that if I describe how she treated me in 2020, they'd be like, oh, she sexually harassed you. I never had no beef with Jaguar. I never I never thought about this shit. It was just some shit that happened to me over a week in my life when I was in my early 20s. And she told her husband and then it came out on the tour. And I thought it was about to be a problem. And he came at me like a G and he was like, I'm not here for no beef or no problem. But got- he knew what time it was. Oh, he was like, she told me what happened. Mm. You know, don't got to like each other. Mm. I'm in my marriage. Mm. You know, I'm my back foot. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I wait, know. he knew that his wife mm-hmm. had slept with somebody on the tour. Mm-hmm. But he said, you know what? What's done is done. I'm going to come out here now and try to save my marriage yes. by being out here with her. Yes. We had a whole affair. I was gonna, I was gonna leave my husband and deal with him. And then Tina Farris from the Roots got jealous, called my ex-husband, told him that Talib had been in my room all night long, and that he needed to come and get his wife. My ex-husband took my business card, booked himself a first-class ticket. Okay. From Philly to Chicago, came straight to the House of Blues. Cause we were doing an okay player tour. If you look at my EPK, you'll see the show. It'll say house of blue Chicago. And the first thing that I say when I open it up is yo, I had a really fucked up ass day. And usually that means I'm going to have a great night on stage. I really had a fucked up ass day. My ex-husband showed up. Talib came into my dressing room. He's here. He's here. Oh my God. He's here. Oh my God. What is he going to do to me? What is he going to do? I was like, he's a whole fucking bitch. You can punch him in his mouth. <laughs> Oh he my was God. that scared. Oh my God. Huh? He was that scared? Yeah. And I'm like, if you don't fucking just knock that nigga the fuck out and get out of my face, I gotta get ready for the show. He wanna run all over the house of blues, telling everybody, oh my God, Jerry Hudson's gonna kill me. My ex-husband running around looking like Daffy Duck and shit, waddling. Where where's Talib? Where's Talib? Like you gonna do anything? I knocked your ass out before I left home. I and, and it was just so disappointing. Like I got to get divorced. He's going to use adultery against me. I'm probably going to have to kick out a little bit of cash and you ain't man enough to fight. And that was it for me and her. If, if, you, not, if you can't fight for me, number one, I understand. Well, that's your husband. You wasn't worried about that last night when you was fucking me. Be a man. You want it so bad, go get it. Was he any good? How was the sex? Honestly, his best friend Juju was a lot better. You cheated on him with Talib Kweli. You came home and told him you cheated on him with Talib Kweli. You wanted to cause drama between him and Talib Kweli. That didn't go down. And so now Sam's frustrated because you continue to cheat. So um, I then rode the tour bus with them to Minneapolis. And um, while we worked on things and talked, um, Talib rode a different bus. Excuse me. And um, I then booked myself a one-way flight she actually paid for a one-way flight one-way flight for me to fly from Minneapolis back home. 
she offered to leave the tour and um, so we can work on the marriage. I said, you're out here for business. I'm not here to disrupt your business. I'm not here, I'm not out here to disrupt what the Roots and Amir and everyone had planned based off your business. You said this to her at 23 years old? Yeah. Wow. I said, so you finish your business and handle your business. And when you come back, we'll have some things set up for counseling. So um, um, I went to her father and um, told her that we had some things we needed to work on. Told him that we had some things we needed to work on. And um, asked if he knew of any good marriage counselors. And her father recommended someone that she, that, that was a friend of his, that she knew from growing up. And um, so we can start marriage counseling. Uh, what I found was that I was the only one going to marriage counseling. Um, so it didn't quite work out when you can't have two parties there. I went virtually every week. Now, sometimes she was still on the road. Sometimes she was in different places. She didn't make it, so, but she could have called in. Right. And that didn't happen. So I did the one-on-ones and then I started to uncover information um, from the counselor because again, he had this relationship with, the, with, with her father. What he did mention to me was, you know, her father was in the military and, um, you know, he had, you know, I don't know, I want to say experiments, but they had some things that he, you know, they did with him. And as a result, he was a little violent from time to time. Not always, but from time to time. He had a high expectation of Jackie. So, for example, if she... He gave me a, a situation where if she came home from school and she was proud that she got all A's but had that one B, he would be upset with her and told me one time he picked her up and put her into a wall. So there was a small little dent in the wall. Wow. So what she does is she looks for men to be able to do the same thing or similar to her in terms of abuse for the man. So for me, I'm not an abusive guy, but she will want that trigger. So she would do things like she would get upset and want to hit me now to be able to have me have a reaction to do that to her. So now I have to keep that in the back of my mind as I'm going through this. How do I live in this kind of a situation. I can't, I'm not used to this. I'm not accustomed to this. I wasn't raised this way to ever hit a woman. I'm not, I'm not I don't need to start now. Um, so. When know, was the first time she put hands on you? No, I can't even remember the first time, to be honest with you. It happened a lot. She, she would try. Yeah, she would try me um, a lot. She would try a lot of different things. Um, you know, she would um, she would try and hit me, and then for me to get out of the situation, I'm like I'm gonna, I'm just, I wouldn't even tell her. I would just try and go to the door and leave, and then she'll block the door away so that I can't leave. Um, she. I can give you various scenarios. Um, I would have, if I bought a thousand dollar cashmere shirt that I wanted, okay, or a two thousand dollar cashmere shirt I wanted, and she knew I liked the shirt, loved the shirt, she would take red wine and throw it on it to ruin the shirt. Or other examples would be, um, there was one situation where she wanted me to come to this party with her. Um, and I'm not trying to always be around parties and stuff. I mean, at that age, I seen enough of it for from her being on the road and that part of her career. So there was a party that she wanted me to come to off of 7th and Arch in Philly. I can't remember the name of the club. 
And I told her, listen, I committed to going to a pool match tonight. My team needs me. I can't, I can't go. And the pool match was at 29th and Ridge at a bar called the Rusty Nail. Um, dangerous area at the time. Don't know how it is now. But someone had just got shot the night before. Mm. All right. And I get off work. I wasn't driving at the time, so I took the bus up there. Get off. And she calls me again, says, I want you to come home right now. I'm like, well, I, I can't come home right now. I have to wait to shoot pool. And my team is going to give me a ride afterwards. You need to come right now. So I'm like, I'm not going to argue with you anymore. I'm not coming. I'll be there when I get there. So, you know, hang up. I shoot pool last. And based off my handicap at the time, my team needed me to be there. I can explain the whole thing, but it's not really necessary. But I had to be there. So I get home. She's not there. Um, so I try and wait up for her, turn the light on, and sit up in the bed and, walk, and turn on TV. You know, she gets home, takes the lampshade off because I left the light on, and puts it to my neck to burn my neck. Okay, so now I have a, a black mark on my neck from the bulb because I left the light on because I fell asleep at night. He want to run all over the house of blues, telling everybody, oh my God, Jared Hudson's going to kill me. My ex-husband running around looking like Daffy Duck and shit, waddling. Where, where's Talib? Where's Talib? Like you won't do anything. God knocked your ass out before I left home. Those are some, those are, that's an example wow. of stuff I had to deal with. Um, for her then to tell me because I didn't come home, she went out and was intimate with someone else. So that's the kind of stuff that I had to deal with. Now, <clears throat> of course, you guys were married for nine years. Mm -hmm. When did baby number one come? So right around then, that's when I was done. When that situation occurred, I just told you about. The light bulb to your neck. Okay. And after she told me she was intimate with someone else, um, did what she could to prove that she was with someone else. And I won't go into the details of that. Um, that's when I was done. And I decided I was going to do the divorce right then and there. She. So this was like two years into your marriage? This is about a year. A year, okay. Into the marriage. Okay. Um, I was ready to be done at that point. Um, and she then told me she was pregnant. So I said, crap, like, you know. I want to divorce you, but I don't believe a child should be should come up in a broken home. Maybe I need to stay in this to fight my way through it. Did you ever question the paternity of the baby? I did not. When I saw my son, he looked enough like me and I'm like, I don't need to do this. So I didn't question the paternity of my son. I did not ask for a DNA test. Um, he was my son and he was mine. So that was that. Um, I almost left while she was pregnant because I found out there was a possibility that he may have been someone else's as well. And um, I still decided to stay because I wanted to see for myself if he was mine or not based off of how he looked. And then coming up through the years, if you see him now, he looks like a good mixture of myself and Jackie. Um, so I never questioned it. But I did stay in it as long as I did. I did stay married as long as I did because of my son. Excuse me. We split up in 2008. So we stayed together for seven years. It was the rockiest seven years of my life. It was probably the toughest time in my life. Um, but, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Did she ever act out in front of your kids? Yeah. So there was Giovanni. Um, I came into Giovanni's life when he was six. His biological father had never been in the picture. And then um, there was Deuce. 
um, Deuce. His name is Sam as well, but I call him Deuce. So um, she would act up in front of them as well. Um, because of her behavior, um, I never adopted Giovanni. In hindsight, the biggest regret I have is that. Um, I was going to say, like. The biggest regret I have is the fact that I didn't adopt him because I would have had more legal say in regards to his upbringing and what his experiences look like, um, which would have deterred and altered his death. So had wow. I had I adopted him, I could have made I could have made a difference. And I allowed her treatment of me and the perception of what she does in front of him and in front of my son, our son Deuce, to deter me from adopting him because I didn't want to go through the same thing I was going through with Deuce with him and having the choice now to fight for two kids in a court system. Um, Cause Giovanni, um, unfortunately, trying to pass, yeah. And um, you know, she talks about that a lot online, and mm -hmm. I just can't imagine, like, as a mom, I have two kids of my own, losing one. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, 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 I empathize with that situation on every level. It, it would probably cause me to not you know, act right or live in reality, you know, because you're just trying not to to deal with the circumstances and, at hand. And I understand her her break from reality right now to a degree. Not fully understand it because I never understand it, but I can empathize also with being that's your firstborn child, you're a mother, you bring this child into the world. And towards the end of his life, you don't even have a relationship with him. You don't wish him happy birthday. You state that the boy is dead to you. And then three days later, he's actually dead. Mm. You know, how do you how do you move past that? And you have one living child left and you choose. Based off your behaviors. To not have a relationship with him or he has chosen now to not have a relationship with you. That's got to be hard and you have to point your behavior at someone who's the easiest person and target. Was Me. she ever violent towards her kids as well? No. Okay. All right. That's that's not towards the kids. <sighs> okay. Um, but when it suited her, she would say things that is untrue about the kids. For example, Deuce being autistic. It's not autistic at all. Um, the boy does well. Straight A's, 1B, perfectly fine. Wants to be a video game designer. Um, he's into game art. That's his passion. Now you have a child. I have a son. He's 18. Yeah. He's a man. 18. Who, who's raising him now? Nobody's raising him. He's 18. He's a man. He is being held hostage. I, I, I by mean, like, you know, 18 year olds, they still need a little support, you know? Actually, my son is autistic. Oh. He needs all kind of support. Okay. It's funny, he's being held hostage. By who? Not getting any. By his father and his grandma. Sam Odom Jr. I am, I'm nervous about talking to you. You know why? This is the first I'll time. Stop. This is the first time I've ever had to interview someone as young as you, okay? So you're the youngest person I've ever spoken to on my show. And two, we're interviewing you about your mom. Yeah. Okay. So are you, I just have to ask a few questions, okay? So how old are okay. you? Okay. How old are you? I am 18 years old right now. Okay. Um, are you being paid to do this interview? Nope. Are you being coerced? Is someone forcing you to talk to me? Mm-mm. Okay. Chose to do this on my own free will. 
Okay. And yeah, so I have your permission to ask you some questions about the relationship that you have with your mother, who um, is known as Jaguar, right? But who goes by, I mean, her legal name is Jacqueline, right? Yeah. How are you doing today, Sam? Well, I'm doing perfectly fine as a person who has just wrapped up all of his college finals for this semester. Doing pretty good. Amazing. How are your grades in school? Very well. I'm an academic. I am one of the best academic students you could find. And as an example, I got not only did I get a plaque for academic achievement in my senior year of high school, but I also perform well on the school level and just like being in school, period. Okay. Okay. Well, congratulations. I love to see my black men out here doing well. Now, I don't want to know where you're going to school because I don't want people like trying to track you down. There's some crazy people out here, believe oh, it or not. Sure. Okay. Um, but yeah. what are you studying? Well, for a major, I want to be a major in game design. Wow. I was going to say, you kind of give me the whiz kid like vibes, like you like the computer and the games and stuff. Oh, believe me. Like, if you ask anyone else that I know, like, if I'm going to make an opinion about myself, and this is kind of me a bit, being a bit rough on myself, but roughly, I could kind of treat gaming, gaming or video games as kind of a second parent to me. Wow. So you're that, like, just just kind of immersed into the video game world. Yeah, so much so that I could say that I practically learned more stuff about real life through games I have in general. Okay, okay. Um, so you're going to be designing like get, like your own games or you, do you want to just work for a company and help them to create games? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, mind, work, I wouldn't mind working for, for another company providing them with my ideas, but if I can work by myself, get like a group of people to work on some of the things that we could do. I'd like that more. Okay. Okay. You know what's so funny is like when I see your mother online and I see you mm -hmm. and your dad, it is like the opposite, like ends of the world. <sighs> you are just so bright and like extremely intelligent. Like, you know, um, and I'm just, ha have you seen some of the things that your mom, Jaguar, has said about you online? I have not caught wind of any of this stuff. I've heard some of the things from my father, but okay. ju just to fully ensure I, I know what's going on, can you please inform me? Okay, so I want to play a video for you real quick, okay? I'm going to play a voice note, okay? okay? And because I don't want to put any words in her mouth, I want you to hear, and I'm sure you know your mom's voice, of course. Um, how's, your, how's your relationship with your mom first before I play this, uh, this uh, recording? Well, well, if anything, I guess to be more general, I love my mom. But for me, I love all members of my family equally. Okay. So you don't like have a favorite or anything like that? I don't have a favorite. I'm not a person of favorites usually. Okay. Okay. When's the last time you spoke to your mom? Last time I spoke to my mom was, if I can think off the top of my head, is August 14th of this year, I think. August 14th. Wow. Like why so long? <laughs> well, let's say... After August the 14th, I felt pretty weird and, and kind of like uneasy about actually calling her. Okay. Okay. And I want to ask, are you, are there any other kids besides you that your mom have? Well, from my mom's side, there was only my older brother, Giovanni, but he died in 2018. Wow. How'd you take that? Well, at the time, it was pretty hurtful. I mean, I mean, back then, I would usually, like, try to act as if everything was fine so that it's, like, people don't see it. It's like, wait, what's wrong with them? But, like, no, I just wanted to get through as much as possible. But inside, knowing that my older brother had died, it's kind of hurtful, especially since, like, he was actually given a, a bit of a second chance after, after having the struggle and 
get money from like the methods of the streets in the past. Okay. So it sounds like you guys live two completely different lifestyles, although you, you know, have the same mom. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't want to, you know, um, talk too much about Giovanni and I'm sure he's watching you and I'm sure he's very proud of you. Um, <laughs> most big brothers would be, you know, when their younger brothers are making, are doing better, are doing well, you know? So I know I would if, you know, unfortunately that happened, you know, to me. Okay. So I'm going to play a series of three videos. Okay. And I'm going to put them okay. to the mic so you can hear them. Cause this is your mom's words. Um, I, like I said, I don't want to put words in her mouth. So I want you to hear exactly what your mom has said about you. Okay. Right. Okay. 2014 when I first left Philadelphia and the reason why I left Philadelphia was because my son was assaulted by another boy at his school in Northern Liberties. The young man took my son, my autistic son, slammed him against the wall and then jammed his erect penis into my son's back through his clothes. I told his father, Samuel Odom, about it. And instead, he went to the school and told the school, she's going to sue you. She's going to sue you. So you better not make a record of this. Don't make a record of this. So is that your mom, Jackie, Jacqueline Wright, who goes by the name of Jaguar Wright? That is most certainly her. I recognize her voice clear as day. Okay. Um, and she was talking about you. Um, I, you know, she's done a few interviews. She did an interview with me and she has pretty much labeled you as autistic and that your father gets a check for you because you're autistic and you were raped by another boy in middle school. Is this true? To say in simple terms, no. However, I'd like to at least describe what what exactly happened there. Okay. So yes, it was in middle school. I was in sixth grade at the time. And in that school, I'm not going to name it by name, even though I recall it perfectly. Okay. Um, all, let's see, to describe the scenery, the boys and the girls had separate lunch had separate lunches and separate recess periods. Whenever the boys were at lunch, the girls were at recess and then vice versa. All of us boys from sixth to eighth grade were making our way to the recess, which was held in the new gym, which had been built in, 20, in 2014. Okay. While we were in that hall, a boy that was older than me, most likely in seventh or eighth grade, from what I can tell from that time, he essentially played a bit of a joke on me with what, what we were doing. For clarification, we both had our clothes on. Okay. It, it wasn't essentially rape. It was more essentially a play of a joke that kind of suggested the motive. Okay. Everyone was around him, and when some of the people caught wind of it, they started laughing. I didn't see it as a joke. And for a young person as myself, being 11 or 12 years old at the time and having no sexual education whatsoever or knowing what exactly that conveyed, that felt vile to my body. And I didn't feel like myself. And I just kind of collapsed. I don't remember how I felt back then exactly, but I wasn't myself. It felt sick and it, so it felt violating. So I just kind of had to leave school that day. So even though, even though the actions definitely seemed like it was rape, it wasn't actually rape. It was supposed to be intended to be a joke. Knowing 2014 culture, I'm not sure if gay activity was joked about back then, but okay. it could be possible with some people. Okay. Um, and so there were, no one raped you. Cause I was just like, how does someone stick there? There, you know, I could talk, you are an adult, so I can talk yeah. to you like an adult. How does someone stick Indeed. your penis through your clothes? <laughs> And so, yeah, if the thing is, that's not possible. Okay. What they uncovered based off of the students' testimonies that were there, multiple students, there were 12 students um, that were there. There was also a teacher that was there. Based off their testimony and based off the testimony of the kid, 
the kid that did the issue was in eighth grade. My son was in sixth grade. They were in lunch line. That kid from eighth grade wanted to be further up in the lunch line. So he put my son in a full Nelson and moved him out of line so he could be further up in the lunch line. That is not pulling down my son's pants and prodding him sexually in any way, shape or form. That kid was a problem kid. That kid had been suspended multiple times before, not multiple times, but a time before that, that kid ended up getting expelled for doing something um, egregious in terms of a fight with another student. And that coupled with what happened to my son and the allegations that she said caused that kid to be expelled. That, that doing that is not my son being sexually assaulted. That never happened. Um, DHS, the school, and there's a letter from the principal stating that didn't occur, okay. that her allegations were indeed unfounded. Okay. Because, I mean, she's kind of painted this picture that he's kind of helpless and he's autistic. Are you autistic? I am most certainly not autistic. And personally, I find that very insulting. Why do you find it insulting? Because throughout the majority of my life, I have been perfectly healthy. I only had pneumonia when I was at a very young age when I was still a baby. But ever since then, I've been perfectly fine. The only other thing that, the only other quote unquote disease that I've probably gotten was the common cold. And that's because like, I have a bit of a lower tolerance of the cold. I okay. get sick of it easier. Do you know what autism is? Well, I did hear of it as of recently in my public speaking class. So I have an idea what it is. Okay. Um, hold on, because I don't want the Autism Foundation to go off on me. So let me just <laughs> read the, <laughs> I'm going to read the definition <laughs> just so we're clear okay. on what autism is, because I don't want to explain it as something that it's not, okay? So it's a serious developmental okay. disorder that impairs the ability to communicate and interact. Autism spectrum disorders impacts the nervous system. Yep, that's definitely what I had, the idea that I had in my head about autism. Okay, okay. So I just kind of wanted you, because I know you had uh, <clears throat> compared it to the flu, and you're, you're still growing, you're, you know, you're, you're a young adult, yeah. and so I don't expect you to know everything, but I did want you to uh, speak on your mental health um, because she claims that your dad is somehow getting a check because you're autistic. She said it in an interview with me that he was autistic and that, you know, and you're, I, uh, you and your mom was keeping him from her and, you know, he can't make the decision on his own and you you get a check for his autism. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't need money. For, I, I don't, I mean, I mean, everyone needs money, but yes. I don't need money for my son. Um, I, I know how to make money, put it yeah. that way. Um, and I do well enough for myself and for my family to be able to take care of my family. My son wants for nothing. Um, you know, God has blessed us to the point where um, he doesn't have to want for a thing when he's with me. I did want you to uh, speak on your mental health um, because she claims that your dad is somehow getting a check because you're autistic and, you know, um, you don't want to live with her because I guess your grandmother on your, you know, who's your dad's mom and your dad yeah. are, you know, pretty much kidnapping you from her. And I'm like, how does someone kidnap a grown man from a grown woman? Because you are in college. Yeah. Are you being kidnapped by your father and by your father's mother? Absolutely not. Every single time I've either, every single time I've went with my father, it was of my own choice. I actually made the choice to go there. He didn't kidnap me. Do you have a relationship with your mom's mom? Yes, uh, my yeah, my grandma from my mom's side, or as I call her, my mom. Okay. I, well, once again, I like every member of my family. I really do like my grandma. Okay. Um, how is she? Is, you know, because your, your mom has stated several times that your grandmother, who is her mom, is uh, schizophrenic. Nope. In fact, uh, the last time I saw my, my grandma, my mom's mom, was 
this Thanksgiving that has passed and she was perfectly fine. Okay. So you, you haven't heard of like any sort of like mental illness that she's had or, you know, her. Nope. Haven't heard of it since. Okay. Well, well not since, but haven't heard of it okay. ever. What do you think about some of the things that your mom is saying um, about you and about your family and about your dad? Like, how does that make you feel? It does not make me feel well at all. In fact, it it feels almost weird, but it kind of angers me because this isn't the mom that I know. It's like the way how she was back when I was younger and looking at her now, it's almost seemed like her entire personality and demeanor has changed completely. Um, after we had split up, she was dating a guy named Justin. Supposedly they were going to get married. Didn't it work out? She met a new guy at an airport named Stead Roy. Um, after one date or whatever, one time meeting him, she decides to take my son out of school and tell me we are both moving to Florida. Um, after I get a private detective, I uncover they moved to Louisiana and she had left my son with Steadroy for a month by himself after meeting the guy one time. Oh my. Now, um, Steadroy highly agitated the fact that he just met this woman and had been with this woman now hardly any time. Like, hey, you gotta come get your kid. Hey, you need to come back here. She comes back, he puts them both out in the street. She's now forced to live off of someone else. My son's sleeping either on a, on a couch or on a floor. And I petitioned the courts to have the custody agreement modified so that I can now take my son. I pushed for full custody, but they didn't want to tear a child away from a mother. And the courts agreed to give me primary custody. And I was at that point in my life moving from Philadelphia to Chicago. And um, she had no place to go, but back home to Philadelphia where her mom had moved. So it made sense to, for her not to even fight. And she agreed to, and she had no choice, but she agreed to the primary custody for me in Chicago. And she had my son during the summer months. Okay. okay. So that's how all that transpired. Okay. For the whole world to hear, Jackie makes the truth an explosive lie. I knew at the age of seven that sis was a liar. I just knew that she was not the one. Look at that HD. HD. I'm getting done with all I need. Look to at you done. on HD. Everything that she said, true or false? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. This woman just put her hands on me. Please, 911, come I here. Did. She's crazy. She's a schizophrenic. Yes, please call the police. Please call the police. Because harassment is a real charge. And what you're doing right now to me is harassment. You done lied and said that I did something that I didn't do. I am a paying customer and your entire staff is inept. Yes, please, police. Please hurry up and come. Oh my God, she got a gun. Please come, hurry up. Okay, we got some sponsors that we need to brag about, which means boldly raise a glass to I'll be right back. 
AdamandEve.com. I'm talking toys, bondage, lingerie, and so much more. Plus, they have 24-7 customer service, so you can order at 3 a.m. if you ain't coming, if you get me, okay? And if something isn't working out, you can send it back within 90 days, no hassle. And if that's not enough, you can also take pleasure in knowing that 20% of their profits goes to help fight the spread of HIV around the world. So go on ahead and log on to AdamandEve.com. Use the code Tasha K for 50% off one item plus free shipping in the U.S. and Canada. Some exclusions apply now, but hurry up and visit AdamandEve.com so they can make you come. See, I enjoy oral sex, but to be honest, some of my experiences have been not pleasing due to lack of proper vaginal hygiene. I went down on this chick once. And the yoni was so good and fresh. It took me on like a whole nother level of just pleasure. So at that moment, I had to stop and ask, what are you using? And she told me, embrace Pangea Feminine Wash. We all know that a fresh yoni brings on a whole new level of confidence. So visit EmbracePangea.com. And of course, I got my winos covered for a discount. So use the coupon code Tasha K for 10% off your first order. Let's put the wine down for a second because at times like this, we need to take a shot of the olive leaf extract because the olive leaf boosts our immune system and has been known to reverse high blood pressure, lupus, diabetes, and certain cancers. Check them out at myoliveleaf.biz to learn more and to order or simply click the link below in the description box. Now back to the wine. And we're back, okay? I really hope that you guys enjoyed part one. Um, I know it moved a little slow, but we had to set up the story, okay? Um, I saw a lot of comments regarding Jag's son, but guess what? No one would be saying this about Jag's son if Jag didn't say it. Now think about it. You all have kids. Um, as much as she's mentioned this and told this this lie over and over and over again, would we have questioned it? So I had to allow this young man. Actually, he wanted to speak, um, and he wanted to speak his truth. And so um, we allotted him that platform. His interview was much longer um, because it did have some things in there that I did not want uh, to be out Um via the public, let's just say that I spared Jackie, okay? Um, because he did say a lot, because he's been through a lot because of his mom. And so um, being that I am a mother, I did um, extend a bit of grace, a bit of grace, because I didn't want him to look back on that and say, damn, I shouldn't have, um, I shouldn't have said that on air, because there were some things that he said that were heartbreaking, okay? And so I just kind of wanted to leave it at that, let him tell his truth, and some other truths that Jackie has uh, faltered on, and that was that. Now, if you guys have a few questions, I'm in the comments real quick for the next, how long, how long? Um, no questions, okay. Well, with that being said, I will see y'all tomorrow night at 5, is it 5 o'clock? It's 5 o'clock, right? 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We got a UFC fight to watch, so that's why we're doing it early, okay? And we will see you with part two. Make sure you have all your affairs in order. Thank you all so much for watching, okay? If you like this video, you can subscribe. Please hit that like button. Everybody hit that like button right now, right now. Um, also, if you have tips on your favorite celebrities, please feel free to send me an email via uh, unwind with Tasha K at gmail.com. If you want to be a part of happy hour, which means you want to write in and have your question answered on the channel, please feel free to send Jasmine an email. That is J A S M I N E at unwind with Tasha K.com. And if you want to advertise on my platform, please feel free to send us an email via marketing at unwind with Tasha K.com. And somebody from that department will get right back to you. And with that being said, now we got to go. It's Teddy in here. Teddy, Teddy don't watch this shit so many times. Bye. <laughs>